Hello, everybody, and welcome to Pure English Practice. I'm Karen Taylor of the Color Vowel Chart, here with learners and teachers. We've come together, learners and teachers, so that we can simply enjoy learning and experiencing how English works. And um, so today I've got some teachers. Raise your hand if you're a teacher. There we go. We have some learners. Raise your hands. Great. Uh, learners, you are the ones who get to speak. Teachers, uh, you can speak too, but we always kind of hold back so that the learners have their opportunities, of course. Um, teachers will have their image cards. Today, I'm going to focus a lot on this sound right here. This is purple shirt, er, and it figures um, importantly in these R controlled vowels that we're talking about today. So let's practice our er a little bit by warming up with the chart. Uh, please mute yourselves and follow me. We'll just use the sounds today. Ready? E, green tea, E, your turn, E, green tea, E, good. Now to make this easier and maybe a little more interesting, I'd like to use one learner as a repeater. So do I have a volunteer learner to repeat after me? Sanada, fantastic. Can you open your mic? Beautiful. So I will start and you repeat after me. Everyone else will repeat with Sanada with your mutes on. Here we go. Green T E, your turn. Green T E. Yes. Silver pin I. Silver pin I. Gray day a gray day a red pepper a red pepper a black cat a black cat a olive sock a olive sock a Great. Auburn dog aw. Auburn dog aw. Turquoise toy oi. Turquoise toy oi. Orange door or. Orange door or. Rose boat o. Rose boat o wooden hook o wooden hook o blue moon o blue moon o a cup of mustard a uh. a cup of mustard a uh. purple shirt er Purple shirt, er. Brown cow, ow. Brown cow, ow. And white tie, I. White tie, I. Wonderful, Sanada. Thank you for being our repeater today. Nice work. Do you have any questions about sounds that you just made? Either Sanada, or any of our participants? I don't. Okay. All right. Let's draw our attention to purple shirt again. This is purple shirt. Er. This is a vowel sound, which means it's a sound we make without touching the tongue or the teeth or the lips to any other part of the mouth. So it's an open sound, like all the vowels. And it sounds, uh, we're going to come from the bottom to find it. This is er. And, and Sonata, you made a beautiful R sound, a, a purple sound, I should say, um, because it sounds, uh, it has a very, the tongue is up here close to the top. Okay. Um, if you start from the bottom, we can say R. Can you try that? R. I like that movement because it helps us get situated or positioned up in this area close to the top of the mouth, okay? Now I have a question for each of you. If this is the top of the mouth, 
How do you make the R sound in your first language? Can you show it to us or demonstrate it for us? For example, caro, you speak Spanish. And if you take a word like uh, caro, like your name, can you say that for us? Caro. I caro. Yes, so my tongue touches the um, uh, upper lip. Behind right, the top of the roof of your mouth. The roof of my mouth, correct, yes. Exactly, caro, caro. So if this is the roof of my mouth up here, baba, it's touching, okay? Mm -hmm. Caro. Um, Senada, what is your first language? Uh, it's Bosnian, and I think uh, R is pronounced the same as in Spanish uh, at the front of the uh, upper T. So it's a touching sound? Touching, yes, yes. It's more likely flat T, but stronger. A lot. Good, okay. So it's like a flat T. Uh, which you, sounds like you know about flap tea, uh, like the word butter, butter, yes. Or yes. better. Mm -hmm. And Akmal, what is your first language? Uh, uh, my first language is Urdu. It is similar like Hindi, Indian language. And I okay. used to speak four languages and English is my fourth language. Wonderful. And with Urdu, when I hear you say Urdu, I hear a touching sound with the R in Urdu. Can you say it again? Urdu. Urdu. Uh -huh. Urdu. And so Urdu, does it have a touching sound? That R sound? Yeah, it is. Are you aware that it's touching Urdu? Yes, it is. Yeah, like uh, I'm aware from my tongue, like Urdu. It, it is up, upper jaws, touching upper jaws on the lips. Great. So it might be, in fact, a lot of the, um, in uh, Urdu and in Hindi, there's a backward R, the tongue might even curl here, backward, right? Yes. It depends. And so in English, we want to have the tongue come down just slightly so that it's not going to touch. And I've found that if we start here, there's almost an instant reflex to touch if we're thinking about R. So coming from the bottom in the vowel space is a way to avoid that. We can just come up R as a reminder, but now we're here and we want to visit some purple words. Um, so can we think of some purple words? Just open up the chat, everybody, and write some purple words, purple words, anything that's purple. So I'll start with uh, my favorite for spring, uh, bird is a purple word bird. Just a few more of those. Oh, nice, Caro. Nice long word. Good. Bird. Tournament first. A couple more. And if you don't know one or you're not sure, that's okay. We just need a few more. Good. Great. Let's get started with these. I love these examples. They'll get us talking. Okay. So uh, try this for me. Say R. Get yourself positioned. Great. And you can open. This is such a small group. Aro, Senada, and Akmal. You can open your microphones. Okay. And I'll just call on you, and you can speak your when it's your turn. Okay. So here we are with purple shirt bird. Caro. Purple shirt bird. Great. Next word is tournament. Senada, purple shirt tournament. Purple shirt tournament. Akmal, purple shirt first. Purple shirt first. Beautiful. Now, this word that came up is car. And thank you for writing that, Senada. Car looks like it might be purple because it has that letter R in it. But one big hint. Most of the words that are A-R are actually going to be down here, R. So car is R controlled. It's this yeah. word that means it starts in one color and it moves to purple. Yeah, That's what R controlled means. Okay. Hello, welcome, Leon. Nice to have you. Okay, so I'm going to write this in the chat that R controlled is just, it's a way that we talk about when we're teaching R controlled controlled. R controlled means that um, 
starts in one color and moves to purple. Okay. So with car, it was a beautiful word. We start at olive sock. So everyone try olive sock, ka, olive sock, car. And that's why caro, that's why your name sounds so different in English, right? In right. Spanish, it's caro. But in English, people are saying caro, caro. Mm -hmm. If if they don't speak any Spanish, that's they'll use the sounds of English to say your name. Mm -hmm. um, so it sounds quite different, right? Yeah, great. Um, Leon, hi, welcome. Glad to have you. Thank you. And where where are you calling from? I'm from Haiti. From Haiti. Wonderful. Glad to have you. We're talking about purple words that sound like er and other words that's, that end with er. So we talked about car. Let's take the word circle um, because Akmal put it in there. This is a purple word. So um, I'd like to hear, again, we'll come to um, Caro. Purple word circle. Purple word circle. Great. So let's take circle, sir, er, 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 er. We can hear just one sound, but now listen to car. Ka, ah, 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 ar, right? Try that for me. Ka, ah, ah, ar. Ka, ah, ah, ah. Good. So this is the one sound, the first color. In this case, it's olive. And you can really start to use your cards nicely, teachers. So we have two colors. We start in olive, ka. R. That's what this movement is. So it's moving up. It's the equivalent of car. When we get to this purple, we need to make a nice purple sound. Okay. Um, let me hear Senada. Car. Car. Nice. Um, Leon, let me hear you. Car. Car. Beautiful. Yeah, if you are from Haiti, then you also you speak Haitian French. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So there's a little temptation to do ar, car, right? To touch here like the French are, but we're going to stay yeah. with purple. Welcome, Budi. Good to see you. And Nettie, we have quite a few people coming now. Okay, good. This is a good start for everyone to talk about our control. I'd like to show you something now. Okay. Um, so I have a few words here for you to look at and we're going to spend a little bit of time and it also creates a nice chant so here if you would close your microphones for just a minute please mute yourself and we're just going to practice to start with ready here we go here or there here or there here or there here or there good it starts at four it starts at four, it starts at four, it starts at four. It's in an hour, it's in an hour, it's in an hour, it's in an hour. Good, are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure? Try this, I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure. I'm sure, or of course, of course, of course, of course, and stop. Good. So we have a lot of different words with the letter R in them, and we'll just start at the top. Our controls move to purple. So I have a lot of little purples here, and I'll just start right here with here, the word here, has the stress right there on the E. What color do you hear before it goes to purple? Here, here, here. Me, e, e. Great, so here, here, great. Um, so we're going to, we can be uh, that I hear you or I'm here. Both of those here's are here, okay? Wonderful. Um, so we'll go ahead and take a nice green syllable uh, vowel sound right there, here. Okay, and we can see how those little purples, uh, it's basically a little movement, okay? What about there, here or there? Is there the same as here? 
here or there. They look the same. They are not the same. <laughs> so we already know uh, if you've been working with me before or Blue Canoe, that spelling is not pronunciation. It simply isn't um, always the best guide. Sometimes it will trick us even. So we have to listen first and it helps not to look sometimes. So here or there, try that. Here or there, 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 there. Good. So what's this sound? The eh, eh. We know we're going to purple, but there's something here. The eh, eh, air. Is there a red pepper eh? Yeah, that's exactly right. So red is a really good vowel to put there. The air. Okay, wonderful. Um, so we'll take this red sound right here. It is air. Air. It's a quick movement. Is the is the, that's the challenging part of it. So here or there, you know, here there. These are quick little movements. But if you practice slowly and then increase your speed, they become clear. The difference between these is very important, right? Here and there are two very different words. Um, here and hair are two very different <laughs> words. So we have to keep the beginnings very different since the endings are all here. Here, hair, her, like her hair. <laughs> okay. So we have this movement happening. Well done. Um, questions so far? Let's take our red. Okay. Here or there? It starts at four. Try that. It starts at four. It starts at four. It starts at four, maybe a meeting, right? What about starts? Starts. Star. Star. Starts. Where does it start? This should feel a lot like a word we've already worked on. Akmal, you want to take a take a guess on that one or an answer? Uh, teacher, can I uh, I get confused? Like uh, white tie words and silver pin. Uh, when I playing games, like uh, I reach level six and then I, you know, fallen down. I didn't make it to the next level. So I am in I between, see. Uh, like green, other 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 uh, you know uh, words that uh, I can't approach. Then I re, uh, re listen on YouTube and then I practice again. But because of time zone, I didn't able to make it live. You know attending live class. Uh -huh. I There's understand, the good. Yeah. I can raise uh, that question just after this exercise then about white and silver, is that right? Yes, white, white and silver. Okay. Thank you for that. If you can put that in the chat too, that would help us a lot. Okay, good. So let's just move through these with starts at four. Sta uh, uh, what color do you hear? Sta uh, uh. I see Caro's mouth. And Caro's mouth shows me a nice olive position. Is that what you're hearing, Caro? Yes, olive. Olives. Yeah, so star, right? Start. Good. Always minding not to touch up here. Okay, starts at four. Wonderful. So I can now take my starts and we can underline. Okay. All right. Uh, what about four? Four. Starts at four. Four. What color can we use for four? Oh, rose boat. Oh, yes, you can exactly. So rose boat four, rose boat four. Try that four, four. We have another color vowel. I thought orange, orange door. I don't That's hear right. rose coat. I hear orange door. Four. Beautiful, Nettie. That's exactly right. So I was, as I was just saying, we have another vowel color that works also in the same position. It's a simpler one and it works better for some people. So for me and my, my California accent, I like orange door four. Um, but I think if I hear uh, someone like, let me see, I always pick you, Doug. 
Doug, are you a rose boat forward kind of guy? Would that be like a Southern accent? Well, that's why I'm getting Doug on the line. He's in Georgia. Huh? It's orange door four for me. Are you orange door? Okay. So orange door is a very easy go-to for everybody. um, Most people, I should say. For some people, they prefer to call it rose. And in blue canoe, we call it rose with a purple ending. So essentially, these are the same. I just put them next to each other for that reason, okay? Um, Think of it as many good ways to approach this this sound, okay? So you can say, or, or, or. And notice how these two are in the very same place in the mouth. They just move in slightly different ways. Once again, rose, boat, or, and orange, door, or. They sound very much the same, okay? So in blue canoe, you'll see rose. Uh, We also know it's orange. Does that help clarify? I have a little video about that, by the way, in Blue Canoe, okay? If you don't use Blue Canoe yet, don't worry. I will post this in our community, the Pure English Practice community, okay? Wonderful. How about an hour? It starts in an hour. It's in an hour. An hour. 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 There's a lot of movement here. Hour hour what color do you hear hour brown cow yeah i hear brown as well hour up on the chart so i can grab my brown here i can grab another little purple okay watch on the chart behind me i'll stop share for a moment if we have ow we come all the way up to blue we can even bounce against the w ow hour okay it should feel like almost like another syllable hour any questions about that hour it starts in an hour okay there we are beautiful now i put this here twice and i did this almost like a conversation because the word sure can sound lots of not lots but i would say three different ways in english depending on who's speaking And so teachers, if you're in the room, I think some of you are native speakers, let us know in the chat which one you use. But listen to the first one. I'm just going to model one and then we'll do the other one, okay? Are you sure? Are you sure? So what do you hear? Sure, sure. Here's the purple, sure. What's here? What's before that? Blue moon. Yeah, blue is a really uh, wonderful option. Sure. It's really good when you want to be emphatic, you want to emphasize. Uh, Maybe you're very concerned. Are you sure? Sure. Then you can pull out that nice blue vowel for extra emphasis. Okay, sure. And so I will use here, we'll use our blue. Okay, and we'll add a little purple. But there's another couple of ways to do this. Um, One way that I modeled before is sort of a fast way, which is, yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure. I'll do that slowly. I'm sure, sure, sure. What color is sure? Sure, 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 I'm sure. (laughs) That's purple. Sure. Yeah, we hear just a purple. So it can be just simply a purple word, okay? I'm sure, I'm sure. There's a third way it can sound. There's a third way. I'm going to come back up here for the sort of um, extra emphasis. Are you sure? Are you sure? Can you hear that color? Are you sure? Now it's sounding like shore, which is like the edge of the, (laughs) the edge of the lake. Or the edge of the sea. Yeah. So exactly. sounding more it like rose orange. boat. Sure. Orange shore. door. Shore. Oh, orange. Sure. Yeah. Orange door. Sure. Rose boat. Sure. sure. Yeah, orange. Yeah. Yeah, orange. Exactly. So orange, you can see how it starts to be an option in different situations. Okay. Um, be listening for it. It's, it's very handy. It's very convenient. 
to be listening for orange and to use orange. Um, but blue is another option and purple. Okay. My last one, of course, of course, of co-or, of co-or, of course, of course. Yeah, another example. Um, Budi, would you like to try this with an orange door vowel for us? I'd love to hear your voice uh, with orange door, of course. Oh. Great. Can you try it again? Orange door, of course. Orange door, of course. Beautiful. I can hear that movement. It's a very nice sound that you have there. Um, so we use that, of course, of course, of course, all the time. A very common phrase there. Okay. So we can see that our controlled vowels start in one sound and move to purple. Um, however, it's difficult to know in advance whether a word is R controlled just by looking. We have to listen. Okay. So, uh, so let's just take a couple of other quick examples. If I take here, like listen, right here, um, this is another green tea, just like here or there. I will just copy that. Okay. However, if we change this to the past, how does this sound? My daughter, when she was three, four years old, um, she saw this word on, on a card in a game and she said, heard, and that was very logical, heard. I heard it. And then she heard herself, she heard herself say heard, and she said, no, I heard it. <laughs> because she already knew this word in speaking and listening, but when she saw it, she said heard. And then when she heard herself say it, she corrected herself. So what color is heard? Yeah, I saw Neri answer purple, er, yeah, you can hear that purple shirt heard. So I can just take this one here and it's simply purple. So this is just to remind you that we cannot look at a word and know in advance whether it's a purple word or if it has a purple control, meaning another color and then purple. OK, we have to listen first, everybody. That's what it comes back to every time is listen to the English around you or listen to the English you listen to in YouTube or whatever your resources are. And when you listen, be listening for these colors that will give you the information that you need to start with instead of the letters that you're looking at. So letters should be secondary. Listening is primary. That's my advice for today. Okay, I'm now going to open up for questions and starting right here. Any questions here before we do one more practice? And then I'll take open questions. Any questions about our controlled vowels today? Can we practice one more time? We want to just remember the rhythm here. So here we are. Here we go like this. Here or there. Here or there. Here or there here or there next it starts at four it starts at four it starts at four it starts at four it's in an hour it's in an hour it's in an hour it's in an hour are you sure are you sure are you sure are you sure yeah i'm sure I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure. Of course, of course, of course, of course, and stop. Well done, everybody. Okay, uh, we are open for general questions and I wanted to go back to the question raised by Akmal um, about white and silver words. Let's, uh, let's review what those really sound like for a minute. So white tie I is a big mover. That's important to note, right? It starts way down here, close to olive. I, okay. Um, Akmal, can I hear your, your white sound? I, 
I. Great. And then silver pin I is a really different sound because it doesn't move in the same way. And it's quite far up. So start with a smile, e, 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 e. And it's just below a full smile green. So this is green, e, e. Can I hear silver from you, Akmal? Silver pin, e. Yep, it sounds great. So now my question for you is, are these confusing because of the letters or because of the sounds? Uh, because of the sounds, not letters. Not the letters. Okay. Yes. Can you give me an example? Uh, for example, uh, when I hear the word uh, like a brown cow, uh, I just uh, uh, see the spelling sometimes, but sometimes uh, mostly 60% sounds. I confused in sounds, not in letters. I'm okay with letters, but sounds makes me confusing. I'm practicing on that. Uh, it takes time. I know uh, when I started first time, it, it, it was difficult, but I'm used to it. Okay. Um, it takes some time. I think sometimes the, the letters do sort of color the way we listen. So it might be the idea of the letter I, which is in both of these spelling patterns. Okay. A lot of letter I will sort of trick us into wondering what we're listening to. Okay. Um, my best advice is to collect white words and collect silver words in the color of our organizer. Right? You can, if everyone has seen the organizer, this is available in the community. But when you collect them, then you'll start to see uh, what, what different words sound like, and you'll start to be able to practice those more important than seeing. Um, so that's that's the best I can do right now, Akmal. If you come with an example or you post an example in the community, that's going to be a great place to get an answer. Let me show everybody the community. Make sure that you are a member. It's free. And when you're here in the community, you can post a question. In fact, you can post, if you say questions, you can look at other people's questions. You see that I post videos, by the way. This one is that video, Neri, about rose versus orange, okay? So you'll be interested in that one. Um, but I mention this because when you write a post, you can upload an image. So Akmal, if you are in Blue Canoe and you have that exact question, you can take a screen capture and you can post it here, okay? Okay, okay teacher, next time I'll do the same as, as, as you directed me. Thank you so much. Wonderful, because it's so easy to forget, isn't it? We forget words, we forget examples. And then here I am saying, give me an example. And it's not so easy to recall. And we know that, okay? So you can post your question, you can add um, an image or a little video. All of these things are possible here. And then we can answer you, okay? In the home section, our next session is on, um, I, I wrote learning because I, it's purple, but it's going to be also be about the letter L and the L sound. So if you're interested in the way L behaves in English, today was R and later this month is L, okay? When you click on these, this is how you find our room for that session. And as you know, I'd like to remind you on the day of the session, sometimes even sooner than that, okay? Um, anything else here, just know that we have a lot of resources. We, we post the recorded session here always, so you can go back and watch, okay? Any other questions before we finish? Karen, is that in Facebook? No, it's no. special. Uh, so this is at learn.colorval.com. This is where we offer our courses, Caro. So this is in the same place where you attended uh, the Speak Confidently course, okay? Let me go back and show everyone what that looks like so that you know this is within our course space. When you are signed in at learn.colorval.com, free enrollment, then you can see this is my home page, my dashboard, okay? Um, if you don't have it on the dashboard, go to learners and you can go to the Pure English Practice community. When you sign up for that community, I'll just open mine, then you're here again. 
Okay. What's nice about this is that it's no advertisements uh, and it's private so that it's not, I mean, Facebook has advantages, but this place is wonderful for what we do. Wonderful. Other questions? Let's see what we have in the chat. Can we keep the same sound in the sentences we speak in Blue Canoe? Uh, Budi, hi, thanks for your question. Can you, can you explain a little more about your question? So, um, thank you, Kiran. Later by later, we can pronounce correctly, but for me, it's very difficult to make same tempo or same pronunciation in a whole sentence. Sometimes it is very difficult. So can you give me some advice how to maintain those blue canoe techniques in a whole sentence? Mm, good, that's a great question. Um, so part of blue canoe, and I know this, it's challenging sometimes, it can seem very fast, right? That's part of it, yeah. Um, so that is a challenge. But one advantage of that challenge is that we keep you focused on, I, I hope, the right thing. <laughs> Let me just come out of my dictionary here. Let's get out of there. There we go. Okay. I'm going to share Blue Canoe for just a moment. Here we are. All right. So in Blue Canoe, this is our app for uh, improved English pronunciation. <coughs> we have number of resources and what you're talking about are the lessons right so if we take for example general workplace and i'll take um i don't know seeking information okay um so this is a good sentence um, you can listen to it and i think booty what you're saying uh, is that it's quite fast and you're wondering how to pronounce all of the sounds in the sentence is that correct yeah, yeah. Okay, so if we listen, would you please email me the document? Now, um, I recorded these at a normal native speaker speed. And part of the reason I did that was to require that you focus not on every sound because English is not a language that delivers every sound clearly. We don't do it that way. The way English works is we have important words, and less important words or unimportant words. So the important words in this sentence are marked. Please email document. And within those words, there's one syllable that's most important. This one, da, document, okay? If you spend your mental energy trying to deliver every syllable, you will have a very difficult time. But more importantly, even if you do that, you won't be very comprehensible because English listeners want to hear a specific time on these three important words, and they want to hear less time on the others. It's simply how our language works. And it's so different from your language, I think, right? It's a little bit different. Budi, what is your first language? Please tell me. Um, let's see. You can keep your mic open. I'll say one word. You're muted again. Try again. Nepali. Ah, uh, Nepali. Okay. So yeah. I'm I'm guessing, but Nepali has equal time on each syllable. Is that correct? Do you feel like each syllable in Nepali follows a time that's equal? Oh, it's, no, not in that way. But in many cases, it resembles to English adulation. Say that, like, say that last sentence again. English, like English in many ways. Uh-huh. Okay, and also you're surrounded by other Englishes that have a more syllable-based delivery. So for North American English and British English too, we have uh, big sounds. So here, would you please email me the document? ba 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 like that. What do you think, Booty? What's the problem here? Yeah, I mean, in a sentence that is focus word and the function word. You mean yeah? The focus words gets uh, high priority. You mean yeah? 
Yes, right. it gets high priority through time. So when I use my hands like this, it's to say the time that we spend on that vowel sound, on that green sound. Would you green, green, the Oliver? <laughs> would you please email me the document? And even when we're fast, would you please email me the document? It still has a relative longer time on these three focus words. Yeah. Right? And so then you, maybe your question. Yes. Yeah. At the same time, the stress, you know, we have to, you know, for uh, me, English is a second language and we have, it's very really difficult some to balance the stress, the focus word, stress, and the rule of the blue yeah. canoe. It's very, sometimes very difficult for us. <laughs> it is. And uh, I, here I'm going to stop share for a minute because it's a good way to kind of shift. When we find it so difficult uh, trying to go in through one door, I want you to step back. And I'm giving you a metaphor here, but I think it might help. Um, let's move over to an idea of dancing. If I had to learn um, a dance that in Nepal, <laughs> you don't want to see me dance. But if you, if you were going to teach me a dance, I would want to know where to put my feet. And I would know want to know exactly where my hands should be and maybe what shape they should be, right? There'd be specific ways to do this dance. And I could get so focused on what should my hands look like and where are my feet and how do I move that I'm almost frozen and unable to dance because I'm so focused on each detail. That's the moment that we need to stop showing me those details and I need to move over to some beautiful party where everybody's doing that dance. And I simply need to feel the rhythm and watch a little bit, but not be so self-conscious, right? So that's this practice we have to kind of do when we speak English from another language is listen to the rhythm and allow yourself to let go of the individual sounds because we can come back, we can work on those when needed, but the most important part of communication in English is through these focus words of English, the colors that we hear, okay? So I, that, I don't, does that help at all? Is that interesting yeah, for you? Yeah, that's... <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I can understand your desire to uh, say, but what about the other syllables? How do I do it all? Uh, it takes practice, okay? And so that's why I recommend, you know, Akmal says he's using Blue Canoe now for two years, which is amazing. My question for you is, are, how often are you using it? How often? Is it every day or you said three times a week? Uh, in previous year, uh, like uh, three times or four times a week, uh, but it is not, not consistent because my parents' health and uh, the, my uh, university education so I use blue kunai three times, three times uh, within a month, like three monthly okay. basis. But I try to use uh, uh, consistently because uh, it is very important to practice, stay tuned and practice consistently. But I improved a lot. Good. Wonderful. Well, it's good to hear the three to four times per week. I would say four is definitely better than three because we want a small amount of time, maybe 15 maybe 20 minutes, you know, we say 10 minutes a day, but I have to be honest, it's really 15 or 20, 15 or 20 minutes with a gesture. This is so important, everybody. Um, Caro, I think you've really, I've watched Caro change her speech so much over this last year and a half or so with Blue Canoe and with a gesture. Um, Caro, when you practice, are you using the extended arm? Yes, I am. I'm using my, since I'm a left person, I tend to use my left arm. Uh -huh. Good. Use your dominant hand. That's right. Whichever one you use the most, because this creates the time and it allows the other syllables to wrap around the important words. So it's a, it's a very different approach to your first languages. Um, and Akmal, so that four days a week, but definitely with a gesture, because looking at the phone, and listening is scientifically, or in terms of what I know about the brain, this is not enough. 
it's intriguing. It's interesting, but it's not enough to change speech habits. We have to have a gesture to reach the part of the brain that will really give you the more time that you need on those vowel sounds. That's my the an, a big piece of advice for the day. Buddy, does that help you too? Yeah, my problem is in the accent. So when I pronounce the single word, I follow the same as a blue canoe. Yeah. But in the combination of the words in a sentence like thought chunking, I cannot yeah. follow the whole rule. So that's my problem. Okay. Then my other advice for everybody, and this is a good way to sort of finish off with some, uh, you know, a bit of inspiration is to remember that I have my short videos of pure English practice waiting for you. Um, I have it on a YouTube channel and I have it in, in the pure English practice community. And those have no words written. And there's a reason for that. It's all oral and we work orally together so that your eyes are not uh, limiting the way that your speech works. And um, because the difference between the look of English and the sound of English is so different. It is so different, right? It's not a phonetically written language. So we have to take a little vacation from it and go do English, and then you can come back and look at it. Okay, so Blue Canoe, even if you close your eyes while listening, that can help. It literally, if you move your eyes away from this, the written word, you'll have a better time listening to it, okay? Um, but also those pure English practice videos. And I will post a link to that YouTube channel in the community. Okay. I want to thank, thank you. you. I really do. Your questions. Are... Oh, you're very welcome. When I, yeah. When I listen to podcast, I, uh, sometimes I feel like the same pattern speaker is mentioning and listening on podcast. So I try to mirroring that or shadowing some, some, something like that. So it also helped me boost my self-confidence to improve more. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Akmal, for that. And really, thank you for your questions and sticking with them, explaining those questions to me. Um, they're illuminating. And I, I know the teachers agree. Just listening to you helps us a lot understand. Uh, Leon, I, do you have any questions? Senada, Caro? Yeah, Leon? Yes, I have a, a conf I am confused about wood, wooden hog and blue moon. Okay, wooden hook and blue moon. Um, are you a member of the community? Are you in this community here? Have you joined yet? No. No. Did you receive an email? Did you receive an email from me today? Yes. Ah, then you are in this community because um, because that's how I emailed you. Okay, that's the good news. So I want you to go, please, to. Um, this community, and I can post a video for you, okay, on, I'll do that right after class, on the difference between blue and wooden. We're a little low on time, but if you come next week and remind, um, yeah, next week on the 16th, I have my next one on um, March 16th at 10 p.m., I can start with that question, okay, but I'll also post a little video for you, okay? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anything more from Sanada? Sanada, welcome. I'm glad this is your first time. Thank you. I don't have any questions right now. Okay. Come again. Caro, thanks. It's good to see you. Any any final insights from you? Well, if, if we can add in the future uh, how to uh, say the words that end in C-H and S-H. Those two are always tricky for me. Okay. C-H and S-H, I've got it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, which and wish. Yes. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, that's a nice one. I think, thank you for that one. Okay, we have some good ideas in the room for next time. I can include those. I want to thank our teachers for being here. Um, teachers, please take some time. Go to that Pure English Practice community. You're welcome to, you know, interact with people there too, or send me a message if you have comments or questions. Everyone, please stay safe, be well, and I'll see you again soon. March 16th is the evening. It's at 10 p.m. Eastern, uh, and just keep watching in the community for our future events. Okay, have a great day, everyone.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Cheers. Bye -bye.